G'day Fixers, James here once again for Carbotech as they have sent me another very cool little blue jig to share with you. And I'm gonna give you my first impressions of the Craig Corner Routing Guide Set. Let's take a look. So here is what you get in the box, but let me show you what it does first and this will all make a lot more sense. So the short version is that this is a corner profiling jig. It comes with a whole bunch of different templates, which we'll see in a second. You position it on your workpiece, you run your router around the outside, and it will give you consistent corners. Why I need this today is I have this rounded corner box to which I wish to fit this piece of ply that will be spray painted nice and black. And I just don't like the look of the square corner into the round hole. So we're gonna use the jig to solve that problem. So in the box, you get, of course, the guide. It has the Craig Grip Max on the back and these four locating steel pins, which can be relocated if you have smaller stock and you need to get closer in. So that is pretty nifty. You get eight profiles, five rounded and three chamfer, hashtag chamfer all the things. They range from six mil up to 50 mil in the roundovers or quarter inch to two inch in the old money and a half, a one and a two inch or 13, 25 and 50 in the chamfer settings. You also get a little storage block. You can be as OCD about it as you want. They click in there nicely and it has got the facility to be hung on a wall which I'll show you right at the end of how I'm going to store this thing. It's got a lovely handle to hold onto to give you a lot of control and like all Craig gear, it is made from that super tough blue injection molded plastic. As I say every time I review one of these products, in five or six years of using Craig gear, I have never chipped, broken, split or cracked a piece of Craig blue plastic. It is lightweight, but it is very strong. What you do not get in the box is this guy. It is Craig's version of a dual bearing flush trim bit. It's available in both the quarter inch and the half inch shank diameters and will go in your trim router, table router, plunge router, whatever you've got. It will fit one in there. However, you don't need to buy this if you have a flush trim bit. It will of course work with pretty much any bearing flush trim that you have. You don't even need the top and the bottom. That just gives you options for a table versus handheld routing. So of course, when you're making a coffee table, you can choose what profile you want, but today I need to match one. That is my six mil, that's no good. That's my one inch, 25 mil, that's no good. So hopefully, half inch, yeah, 13 mil. That should match it quite nicely. Not perfect, but close enough. So here are your pins, here is the selected template. And that is very firm. That's crazy firm, actually. There we go, but it does lock in there nice and secure. So for my first test, I'm going to use the flush trim router. I have got my workpiece clamped down to my clamping bench and a little dog back there to hold it in place. This is actually quite nice. It has got, here we go, reminders on there that when you're using a handheld router, you're going to go this way around. And when you are using the table, you're going to go that way around. So that's very nice. I will point out though, these stop pins are 11 mils high or just under half an inch, meaning that if you want to do thin stock, you won't be able to do it on the router table. You have to use the handheld router. And in fact, the guidelines say that this jig is designed only for half inch, 13 mil or greater thickness in stock. The router, of course, sits on top like this. We'll be going in this direction. And you can see that I have the top bearing lined up with the template guide here. That template is like half a mil proud of the actual corner piece so that you're not going to eat into the bits that you do not want to with the flush trim bit. So of course the way I would have used to have done this is to get anything with a round thing, don't ask me why I have hairspray in the garage, and try to feel and line that up, mark it off with a pencil, and then take that to a disc sander or something in order to take off the corner. And that's perfectly fine. It's really easy. It's just not as repeatable. Here, it honestly doesn't matter too much. But if you're doing a nice tabletop or a box lid or something along those lines where you want it to look schmick, then you can't beat the accuracy of a template. I suppose the only thing here is that you're limited to a few certain sizes, whereas using your imagination, you can get anywhere in between. 
Now unfortunately for my example on this workpiece, it's going to be incredibly undramatic because I only need to take off a tiny amount to get the 13mm radius on there. We'll do a better demonstration with a bit more of an aggressive cut after this. Okay, so not only was that a more aggressive cut, it was also a better cut. Not gonna lie guys, I was not happy with that first result. Luckily this isn't a terribly important thing. But what you might be able to see here is there's that flat spot on either side. That's for the half inch 13mm one. And I can tell that my board here is not exactly perfectly cut. I didn't rerun this through the table saw and I can see that that profile is um, not 90. So I think if your board is not 90, you are potentially going to struggle getting a nice accurate corner, so that is something to know. Also, this one was handheld, whereas this one I had clamped down. So there's a handheld one, and it's better, but you can just see, see that little angle there? I would expect that to be a perfectly round and smooth. Again, that one's better again. My router was tilting and wobbling slightly too, so I think this is potentially a technique thing. But you do just have to be aware that I'm not getting the perfect results straight out of the box. I am getting these slight little ridges on things. When I stepped up to the 25mm or 1 inch version, that is much, much nicer. That's gotten rid of basically the entire transition on there. And I think the main difference was I had this clamped down to the jig and I could use two hands to stabilize my little trim router and that has given me a better result. Let's pop it in the router table and see if that helps too. So first I'm repeating the test on the 25mm 1 inch roundover setting and straight away with the template on the table this feels a lot more stable. I switch it over to the 2 inch 50mm chamfer, the big boy one. And that was going well, the first one came out correctly but then a couple of things literally came loose. Firstly, you'll notice that I didn't have the pin set to the correct location, and then one of the other pins vibrated itself off. That could have been bad. Fortunately, it only took a second to tighten them and to reposition the pin to the correct location, and I was able to complete the test. Both these things, my fault, not the tools. I make these mistakes so that you don't have to. That's why I film these things. Well, that was a little bit of a mixed bag now, wasn't it? Honestly, on the table, it was much more controllable. And I think that, and I'm gonna use this in the future, I will come to the table rather than trying to do it handheld. Clamping it down handheld did improve it, but still, I'm not happy with the results that I got. Please keep in mind, this is literally the first time I have handled this thing. And like with any tool, practice will make perfect. And I'm sure over time, I will be able to improve my results and not just blame the jig. But, out of the box, I don't like that half inch 13mm round over there. It's too flat and I couldn't quite get the result I was after. Maybe I'll redo it on the table and see if that helps. Because when I did come over here, these are much better. That is beautiful. That is the 25mm. Feel a tiny little bit of a transition there. But this one I've done better. And it is pretty much perfect. And they, to the eye at least, are consistent. The chamfers are even better because you have a hard transition, then they're gonna be pretty sexy every single time. So if you are doing chopping boards, serving boards, and you're doing coffee tables, anything where you wanna profile many corners, then this thing could be a worthwhile investment for you. Let's see how we hang it on the wall, and we'll call this one a good one. Those black marks from earlier was because I used them to print onto the backing board here to see where I had to drill so I could just insert these into the wall.
And of course the case is pretty good, they're not going to fall out anywhere. You can hang it up vertically or horizontally using the two screw hooks on either side, which I've just put in here. Now it is going to hide behind the clamps a little bit, but honestly I won't be using this thing every day. So that's as good a home as any. This has been James from Fix It Fingers for Carpetech and Craig Australia. Hope you found this useful information about the new Craig Corner Profiling Jig, and I'll catch you on the next one.